In this video, I will go over the basics of what it means to reef a sail and when it is appropriate to do so. Reefing is simply the act of making your sail smaller. And to make your sail smaller, what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to attach the sail at a new tack and a new clue. And this simply makes the whole sail smaller and then it's more manageable in higher wind conditions. This gives you more control and balance while you're sailing so that you can continue to sail through higher wind conditions in a safe and controlled manner. To demonstrate how to put in a reef, we're gonna be tucking in a second reef in the sail. So as you can see, there currently is the first reef already set and you have the tack and the clue already tied in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down the second reef tack and then we're gonna tie that one in and then we'll adjust the clue. Reefing is really simple and easy to do. All you need to do is lower the sail until the tack point comes down to the gooseneck and then you're gonna tie on or hook on the tack. After you get that set, you retighten the halyard and then you go work on the clue. That's all. Now a lot of times people will say that you should crank up your motor and motor straight into the wind. What that's gonna do, it's gonna make your sail flap around like a flag. And the idea behind this is then the pressure is less on the sail and it's easier to do. But the reality is it's flapping around violently and it'll hit you. So it's really hard to do it that way. So the way we do it is we turn onto a broad reach so we're going downwind, the sail is full, and it stays steady. And as you can see, I'm able to do this totally fine all alone in winds that are upwards of 30 knots. So if you ever need to do it, get on a broad reach and then bring the sail down little by little until you get it to the point where you can reach the tack. In our case, we have a Dyneema tack pennant that's not common on boats, usually it's a tack horn. So what you do is you'd actually slip the tack cringle over the horn and then it's set. So after you have it set, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna retension the halyard. So you're gonna crank back up on the halyard and raise the sail back up. And it's only gonna go as high as the new tack. If you have a Dyneema tack pennant like we do, you'll be tying a long and lengthy knot like what I'm doing right now. Okay, we got the tack line finally tied off, so it's time to rehoist the halyard. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the halyard back on the winch and start cranking. It's important you get full loft tension before you tighten the clue, because if you tighten the clue first, you run the risk of actually ripping the sail off the loft track. It's really bad. So always tighten the tack first, get the halyard super tight, and then go to the clue. Now at this point, you are done with the halyard. So it's a really good idea to coil it up, that way it's tidy and out of the way. So coil it up and hang it up, and you're done. You won't have to touch the halyard again during this reefing. Okay, with the halyard done, it's on to the next step, which is gonna be the clue. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your clue lines loose and ready, all of them. Now, if you have two reefs, you have two sets of clue lines. If you have three reefs, like in our case, you have three sets. So it's really easy for them to get tangled and kind of jumbled together. So while everything is slack and easy, it's a good idea to figure out which one exactly you're working with and go from there. It's also a really good idea, especially if you plan on sailing in the dark, to have it set up in a way that you don't need to see what you're doing. So in our case, we actually have them tied in different places and we can grab on the knot and follow it out and we know exactly which clue line we're grabbing. So we got the second clue line on this one, which is the one that we're putting in. And you just hook it onto the clue winch and start cranking on the boom. So as you can see, as I crank, it's going to actually raise the boom up and tighten the clue down to the boom. So what you've done is you've created a new foot to your sail. So instead of the sail going all the way up to the top of the mast and then the bottom of the sail being the actual bottom of the sail, in this case, you've attached the boom part way up on the sail. But since the boom can't move, what you do is you bring the sail down to the boom. This is why you tie on a new tack and then you tighten on the new clue. 
So you have the excess foot of the sail under the boom. It's kind of baggy, and we're going to tackle that in a moment. But in the meantime, you have a nice flat sail that is smaller and easier to manage in these higher wind conditions. So you want to tighten it down nice and tight until you see the foot go pretty darn flat. So the flatter the sail, the more it spills the wind, and the less powerful it'll be. And that is what you want when there is too much wind. Just like with the halyard, when we were done with it, we coiled it up. So now that we're done with the clue line, we're gonna coil it up as well. So you wanna pull in it and get all of its excess as well as the ones that are lazy that you're not using right now. Because when the sail comes down, they can get pretty baggy and they can hook on things on your deck. So you wanna get them all coiled up and stowed away nice and neatly. The last step in reefing is to tidy up the foot of your sail. So most sails have reef lines put in them and all you need to do is tie up the excess with those, knot, with those lines using a reef knot. This is easy. If you notice, I'm not doing that and we don't even have reef lines in our sail. The reason is, it's very easy to forget to untie just one of them and if you don't untie them and you shake out the reef, you'll rip your sail. So to avoid running that risk, we don't have them and we don't use them. Instead what we do is we pull the excess sail through the slot in the foot of the sail over the boom and then I tie up the excess out at the end of the boom with a sail tie. This works well. It's not beautiful and it's not perfect, but if we were actually in really heavy conditions, we wouldn't be using our mainsail anyway. We drop the whole thing, tie it up, and then have our storm trysail up. So for the conditions where we'd be using our reef sail, this works well enough. Right now you can see why it's really important to be on a broad reach and not nose into the wind. If we were nose into the wind, the boom would be flapping around violently. And me in this position, I would be beaten to death by the boom. Being on a broad reach, even though we're in winds over 30 knots, you can see everything is stable, stationary, and very calm. So that is the beauty of reefing on a broad reach instead of trying to go into the wind to take the pressure off the sail. Another thing. The idea of taking the pressure off the sail is what you're doing while reefing. You're making the sail smaller, therefore there's less pressure on it. So if you think, oh, I only need one reef and it's just too much pressure on the sail, maybe you should put in a second reef as well. Like put in two reefs at that point instead of just one. So it's a nice little backup system just to check and make sure that you're reefing enough in the conditions that you're in. So the last part of this discussion is going to be when to reef. Now there's a couple simple ones and then there's some that are a little more complicated. So the simple ones are if you feel like it, if you think you need to, and if you think you might need to. Now the reason is it's easy to tuck in a reef when the weather's calm and it's not so easy to tuck in a reef once it kicks up. So if you see some big clouds coming, there's a quick drop in temperature just to get an uneasy feeling you see a ton of white caps to windward crew starts getting seasick like just all sorts of reasons tuck in the reef because if you decide that no you didn't actually need the reef it's really easy to let the reef out now if you look at something you're like wow that's a huge storm and it's coming my way let me see what's gonna happen and then it smashes into you and you heel over and you're bucking around the seas that is not the time to go up on deck and put in a reef so do it beforehand. If it hits you, you're ready. If it doesn't hit you, take the reef out and keep going. Now when to shake out the reef, we wait until it's calm. So the weather can pass, we want clear skies, we want the winds to calm down, and we want the sea state to improve. Once it's nicer, you just get this feeling and you know it's time to shake out the reef. And then we do. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.